Hello, good evening, Dr. Trudy Ufondu of Snowspirations Global Health Solutions. Thank you and welcome to Open Clinic with Dr. Trudy. Today, we're going to talk about the fundamentals of ovulation and fertility window. So what are those basic facts, basic knowledge about ovulation and fertility window? Now, every woman in our community desiring to be a mother should know all about ovulation. And by default, you should also know about your fertility window. Now, it's the rudimentary knowledge that will help you to be conversant with your body as a woman. So the next 30 minutes, we're going to talk about ovulation. Now, there are key points I want you to keep at the back of your mind. Number one, follicle. Number two, X or oocyte. Sperm, fertility, tubes, ovaries, and implantation. Now, at the center of everything regarding pregnancy and being a mother, it's ovulation. So what's ovulation? Ovulation simply means that particular time. So ovulation is actually a time and a process. When one or many, depending on your body. One or two eggs are released from the ovaries. Now, every woman is given this ovary from birth by default. So once you come into this world, you already have two ovaries. Now, depending on how your body is structured, Every woman has a unique menstrual cycle. So menstrual cycle is the interval between your two bleeding months. So let's take, for example, this is July. If you can pinpoint the first day you bled in June and you pinpoint when you bled in July, when you calculate the number of days between when you started bleeding in, Ju in June and when you started bleeding in July, it's going to give you an idea of your cycle. It's called menstrual cycle. Now, if you can track it for a long period, then you can begin to do one of few speculations and you can begin to do one of few estimation. Now, the regular commoner cycle out there is 28-day cycle. But not all women will have 28-day cycle. So assuming you know that every 28 days you bleed and you bleed for an average of two days, three days, four days, five days, up to seven days, which is the normal. So the normal cycle is 21 days to 35 days. So if you fall between 21 days and 35 days, it's considered normal. Now your bleeding duration too, if you bleed for at least two days, up to seven days, it's also considered normal. Now let's begin to talk about the relevance of these two concepts regarding your ovulation. Now, if you have this regular predictive 28-day cycle, somewhere in the middle, so if you go to the middle of 28, what do you have? 14 days, right? Now, somewhere in the middle of that 28 days, which is on the day 14, remember that the first day of your cycle is the first day of real bleeding. Some women might spot before they bleed, and some women will spot later after they bled. So long as you've bled for two days, it's normal. So long as you've not bled for up to eight days, that's more than seven days, it's normal. Now, on this day 14, what happens in your body? I want us to remember hormones. So everything that happens to the body of a man and a woman, it's under the control of reproductive hormones. I'm going to mention a couple of them that are very unique in this process of fertility, window, and ovulation. Number one estrogen. You have to have adequate level of estrogen, which will get your body ready. So estrogen is predominantly a female hormone. Then you have to have progesterone. Progesterone is pregnancy maintaining hormone. For you to be pregnant and sustain your pregnancy beyond implantation, you have to have adequate level of progesterone. FSH, very big player in the process of ovulation. FSH stands for follicular stimulating hormone. Remember, I asked you guys to keep follicular at the back of your mind, right? Now, each of these ovaries will contain follicles. Follicles are the container where the eggs will develop. So follicles are like vehicles. Eggs are like passengers. Now, within these 14 days, 
there are so many changes that will be happening in the body of a woman. Preparing one follicle, which will now call the dominant follicle. Now, this dominant follicle will keep developing, will keep maturing, will keep developing. Now, about the 24 hours to the ovulation day, another important hormone, which we call the LH, luteinizing hormone. So, how many hormones have I mentioned? Estrogen, progesterone. FSH and LH. Now, LH is luteinizing hormone. LH is more like the forerunner. LH is what tells the body, hey, ovulation is about to happen. The queen is about to show up. The queen is the egg. Once we've noticed a spike in LH, which is called LH surge, matter of fact, if you are checking your ovulation test kit, what you are actually checking in that urine is LH. Once we have a surge, Within the next 24 hours, the woman will ovulate. This is if everything in the body of that woman is perfect, which sometimes it might not be perfect. So within that 14 days, the woman will do what? Ovulate. So ovulation simply means the process of maturation of that dominant follicle, the process of rupturing of the dominant follicle, and the process of releasing that egg, which will now enter the tube and wait in a special place called the ampulla. The ampulla is where fertilization will occur. So if everything goes okay, and the man deposits healthy sperm inside the vagina, which will also travel to the tubes, the sperm will meet the ovulated eggs, both of them will unite to form embryo, then both of them will begin the downward journey to implant. This is simply what ovulation is all about. So it's that time when one egg or eggs, if you're going to have multiple pregnancy, if you're lucky, then more than two eggs will be released. They will enter the tubes. They will be fertilized by the sperm in the tube. Then they will begin their downward journey to implant in the womb. Now, two things. If pregnancy succeeded, there will be a couple of hormonal changes in the body of a woman to sustain the pregnancy. If pregnancy failed, the whole of that egg that God produced will disintegrate. Now, when you bleed next, you'll be part of what will slow off from your body. So there are two things that will happen to eggs that God released. They will enter the tube. They can either be fertilized or they will go further to enter the womb and be flushed away during your bleeding. Now, the other concept, the other fundamentals I want us to talk about is what? Fertility window. The concept of fertility window is tentative and so-called because we use the lifestyle of the egg and the lifestyle of the sperm to plot these seven days. So fertility window is the time in a woman's cycle when she is most fertile. That's the period she can easily and more likely become pregnant if everything is perfect. So fertility window opens before ovulation, five days before ovulation. The thinking be behind the five days is the fact that when a sperm is released from the man and is deposited inside the vagina, that sperm can survive up to five days. Now, if a sperm is deposited inside a vagina and survives up to five days, remember the 24-hour window, which is the lifespan of the egg. So once an egg is released, you need to fertilize that egg within 24 hours. Once 24 hour, hour is gone, then the possibility of fertilization will dwindle. So if you add the five days to the ovulation and a day after, that tentative seven days is the so-called fertility window. This is the time in a woman's cycle she has the best chance of becoming pregnant. Now, this doesn't mean that a woman cannot become pregnant outside the window, but we are looking at probability. We are looking at chances. We are looking at odds. You will have a better potentials of becoming pregnant if your partner makes love to you about this time. This is the so-called fertility window and the concept of ovulation, which every woman should be conversant with. Now, some women will have fluctuating cycle. There are a couple of things that will affect your cycle. Once your cycle is fluctuating or irregular, it will affect the possibility of ovulating. Now, not all women will ovulate every month. There are some women that will be having skip ovulation. There are a couple of factors that can affect your ovulation, and there are some signs you should be conversant with. These signs are called non-specific signs. Things like increase and 
visible difference in the mucus, in the mucus in the in your cervix. So this is the cervix between the junction of the junction between the vagina and the womb. When you are ovulating a majority of women, you will notice some changes in the cervical fluid. They will be more transparent. They will be slippery. They will be more like what we call cervical FY mucus. The reason is because this mucus will now help the sperm to come in. So majority of women that are ovulating will notice this. Some women will notice mid-cycle pain. That means you might likely have pain on the left side or the right side, depending on the side of the ovary you're releasing your egg. Some women will spot. So some women during their ovulation, they will spot. Some women will have mood swings. Some women will have breast tenderness. Some women will have increase in their libido. Some women's vulva and the vagina area will begin to be a little bit swollen, and some women will notice increase in their ability to desire their partner. These are all non-specific changes, getting your body ready for pregnancy. So ovulation is a very well-defined, carefully, stepwise process that a woman must go through before she becomes pregnant. Without ovulation, there will be no pregnancy. Without the eggs, there will be no pregnancy. Without the sperm, there will be no pregnancy. So the only thing that will make you a mother is your ex. Some women might have problems with the vagina. Some women might have problems with the cervix. Some women might actually have problems with the womb. Some women might have problems with the tubes. But once you have a problem in your ex, which is resident in your ovaries, the possibility of having your own baby is limited. Now, if you have problems in the vagina, if you have problems in the cervix, if you have problems in the in the womb, can you still become pregnant? No, because if your womb is gone, you can't become pregnant. But can you still become a mother with your own genetic material? Yes. What do we need? The eggs. Then we look for a surrogate mother so you can have your own baby, everything completely your baby. We're just going to use the other baby, lady to be your vehicle for having your baby. So everything at the center of defeating infertility at the center of becoming a mother it's on ovulation and fertility window. Now, in our organization, because we know that some women might actually not be able to pinpoint when they are ovulating or they might have irregular ovulation because of age. So age can affect your ovulation. Hormonal imbalance, your body weight, stress, lack of sleep, couple of medications. Anything that affects your functionality, anything that affects your metabolism can hamper your ovulation. And when that happens, you might have temporal or long-term infertility. So it's important to take care of you as a woman, as a package, because anything that affects the way your body should function can lead to ir irregular bleeding, can lead to irregular cycle. And if you don't have a regular cycle, possibility you might not be ovulating is very high. Now, some women might not bleed, but they are ovulating. So at the center of everything we do in our group is to encourage women to always meet with their partner, whether you have those physical signs, non-specific signs of ovulation or not, we encourage you to meet with your partner every 48 hours. Okay, so that's my presentation this evening. I'm going to open the clinic now. Please feel free to ask your questions in real time, and I'll provide you feedbacks. Go ahead and ask your questions, okay? All right, the clinic is open now. Feel free to ask your questions. Do we have any questions? Yatossi and COO, do you guys have questions? If you do, please go ahead and ask so we can round up. Let's see if we can round up in 20 minutes. Okay. Nancy Lucale, thank you for coming. How can you know you are ovulating without a test? Like I mentioned, there are no specific signs. So non-specific means it's not reliable. So you can notice increase in your cervical egg wire mucus. You can notice breast tenderness. You can notice spotting. You can notice pain. You can notice bloating. You can notice mood swings. You can notice increase in your cervical, increase in your libido. These are all non-specific, but the only way to confirm 
you are ovulating is to go to the doctors. There are some blood works we can use. There are a couple of tests we can use to look at the, at the ovaries and confirm if you're ovulating or not. So you can have all these non-specific signs and you might not be ovulating or you might not have it and you're ovulating. So the only way to confirm your status, which we encourage every woman anyway, if you feel that part of the problems you might be having in regards to not becoming pregnant is ovulation related, please go see a gynecologist baseline. A gynecologist will refer you to a fertility specialist. The special doctor trained in the process of helping women to become pregnant is called a fertility specialist. So that's the only way to confirm if you are ovulating or not. Now, thankfully, some women might still have eggs, but they might not be releasing the eggs. If that's your situation, we give you ovulation induction drugs. Things like Clomid that people in the third world country they abuse. When we give you Clomid, what are we doing? We are telling your ovaries, you know what? Why are you keeping the eggs behind? We need all the eggs. So what ovulation induction drugs will do is to alter the natural process of ovulation because the natural process of ovulation is to release one egg. But when we are giving you ovulation induction drugs, we are telling the ovaries to give us all the eggs in that cycle. So if we give you ovulation induction drugs, we might end up getting 20 eggs as against the natural process of getting the egg, which is one. So that's what you need to do. Now, I want you to focus on 35 as age. That's the demarcating factor between where you need to start taking action. If you are 35 years and above, and you have been diligently using our formula in our group, which is praying, playing, and practicing, after the sixth month, if you are not able to achieve pregnancy, you need to see a fertility specialist. If you are below 35, after 12 months, you need to see a fertility specialist. Because at that point of not having a baby, not becoming pregnant at six months, if you're doing the right things, or at 12 months, at that point, you will begin to be classified as having infertility. Okay? All right. How do ovulation test kit work? I love this. Now, remember when I was telling you guys about the hormones, right? There is one particular hormone that is actually the basis for ovulation test kit, the LH hormone, luteinizing hormone. So when you test for ovulation test kit, normally we advise you to do with your first urine in the morning. You get a strip, just the same strip you normally use for your pregnancy test. You get a strip, you pee on the strip, then you check the color changes. When you pee on the strip, based on the content of LH in your hormone, it's going to tell us. So when we have a positive outcome in your LH test, which is the ovulation test kit, within 24 hours of getting a positive outcome in your ovulation test kit, if everything is standard, so everything standard means the, the ovaries are going to release the eggs, the eggs are going to go to the tubes, the tubes are going to be patent, the sperm is going to come in. So if your partner has sperm in the vagina, and we check, and your ovulation test kit is giving us a good signal. Guess what will happen? You become pregnant. Now, listen to me. Not every woman will become pregnant immediately. Even women that have 100% of everything checked, even men that have 100% of everything checked, sometimes everything will be perfect, but you will not become pregnant immediately. So this is where patients will come in. So you need to continuously, persistently show up. So even when you've checked all the boxes and we've checked everything and it's okay and you're not becoming pregnant, like some people might have been wanting to become pregnant actively in January. You don't give up in February. You keep trying until December. Then if, if you get to December and you're, and you're above 35, then you begin to seek for help. But if you, if you started trying in January, and you're 35, let's assume you're 36, you started trying in January, by this July, you should have a fertility specialist. Very important. Okay? All right. Can one ovulate without bleeding? Yes. Especially women that are newly delivered of their babies. So new mothers, before you go home, we normally advise you to get a reliable contraceptive. So some women shortly after birth can quickly ovulate without bleeding. So the concept of waiting to bleed or using your bleeding as a marker of fertility is deceptive. So some women might not see their bleeding after childbirth and they would have ovulated. And if their partner makes love to them, they can become pregnant. This is why you will see a woman that the baby is three months, four months, and they tell you, oh, doc, I'm pregnant. What will I do? Will I keep the baby or will I abort the baby? This is why. So stop using bleeding as a yardstick for ovulation. Some women might be bleeding, but they are not ovulating. And some women will not be bleeding, but they are ovulating. Just keep on keeping on. 
keep on playing your own role. Keep on making love, which is the only way to confirm if you are ovulating or not. The evidence of whether you're ovulating or not is pregnancy. Okay? So the answer is no. All right? Okay. Hi, Doc. Please, what costs the ring to be yellowish? Now, depending on the concentration of your urine. Now, the more hydrated you are, the more your urine will be clear. The more dehydrated you are, the more your urine will be concentrated and likelihood be yellow. Now, there are so many things that can change the color of your urine. It might be just normal variation, or it might be because of some drugs, or it might be due to a couple of electrolyte you know, differences in your body, or it might be a sign of infection. So any of these things can change the color of your urine. Now, there are some colors we might not visibly see because we need to run it by urine analysis. So there are some women that might actually be passing blood in urine, but it might not be visible in the eye. We have to send it to the lab and go through what we call the curtain microhematuria. Hematuria is the possibility of seeing blood in your urine. So some women might actually have problems with their urine and they will know. So the color of your urine can only be indicated by the time we go for your urinalysis. But if you're not drinking enough water, possibility that your urine is going to be tick yellow is high. So drink a lot of water. Okay? All right. Do we have any other question, please? Ovulation is a topic you don't want to miss. Ovulation, it's like our bread and butter. When we started our group, this group was highly huge in ovulation because we wanted every woman to understand her body. Your body should be your best friend. You should be able to an extent to predict things that will happen to your body. You should be able to tell us, that's the time you, you, you learn about your body, you should be able to plot your January to December. You should be able to know when things are not going right. You should be able to know when you have amenorrhea. So amenorrhea is the lack of period for a period of three months. Now, let me tell you what you need to know. If for, for 12 months, you have not bled, that's 12 complete months, no bleeding, no menses, please be worried for a good reason. It's possible, depending on your age, it's possible, highly, highly possible you've gone into menopause. If you're not up to 40 and you haven't bled for 12 months, then it's highly, highly possible that you might have likely had what we call primary ovarian failure. So please pay attention to your body. Now, some women might be carried away. There are some women that might even be pregnant. They won't even know they're pregnant. The only women that know if they're pregnant or not are the women that are actively looking for pregnancy. So there are some women that test pregnancy Every Monday test, every two weeks, they just anytime they miss their period, they test, but that's not the best way. The best time to test for your pregnancy is seven days after your missed period. Okay, so that's what you need to understand. Is it true that someone needs progesterone after getting sacrilege? Now, here's the deal when you have a predisposition of having likely poor outcome, or if you have a poor history of your pregnancy, that means previous pregnancies didn't end well, you had miscarriage, you had stillbirth, and we check all the assessment, and we felt maybe that the cervical sacrilege might be what you need. That means you might have cervical incompetence. That means the integrity of your cervix is not strong enough. Some providers definitely will want to take precautionary measures. So when we are giving you cervical sacrilege, we are trying to make sure that the integrity of your cervix is strong enough to support your baby at least up to 37 weeks. Now, the role, remember the role of progesterone. Progesterone is the pregnancy maintaining hormone. So for your pregnancy to go through the stage of implantation, then nurturing, making sure that everything is good with the baby, your progesterone will be very, very good. So most women, if not all, 90% or more, will get supplemental progesterone if we are worried about the structure and the integrity of your cervix. So it's a common practice. Okay? How many eggs are released during ovulation? Very good question by my COO. So here's the deal. During ovulation, depending on your ovarian reserve and depending on what God wills, you might release one egg or more than one egg. Now the question is, what happens when you release more than one egg? And what happens when you release one egg? So it's all a game of probability. Now, sometimes people might release more than one, but 
It's only the viable X that will make it. So you can release one or more than one. Now, if you release more than one egg, and at that particular time, we are also blessed to have good, good sperm. The two eggs that God released can be fertilized by two different sperm, and you can have multiple pregnancy. You can have twins. But in this case, they will be non-identical twins because they are two different sperm that fertilize two different eggs. So you can ovulate one, or you can ovulate more than one. Now, that's the natural process. Once we transition to getting you into the range of IVF, of, of fertility treatment, um, st ovarian stimulation, we can tell the, the, the ovaries, you know what, you have done a great job, but please give us all the eggs in this cycle. So if we are giving you fertility treatment, if you're undergoing fertility treatment, you might likely get more than one eggs. So some women can, younger women can get up to 20, some can get up to 30. So whatever eggs they have in that cycle will challenge your ovaries and they will go through the process of what we call super ovulation. So in super ovulation, you release more than one egg. I love that question. Okay, guys, can we push it to the next five minutes? More, five more minutes. If you have any other question, feel free to ask your questions. Now, on the 31st of this month, we have a huge event coming up for women resident in Nigeria who are having challenges, becoming mothers, becoming pregnant because of gynecological problems. We have a resident erudite professor of obstetrics and gynecology who taught me in the medical school who will be our guest. So if you need to know more about a couple of gynecological problems, endometriosis, um, fibroids, adenomyosis, and all those OCs that might likely be standing in your way of becoming pregnant, please register. Event is still ongoing. Registration is still ongoing. This event, it's actually tailored for women in developing countries, and we are using our country home, Nigeria, as a focus. So please, if you have a need for this, register, and we'll see you guys on the 31st by 9 p.m. Nigerian time. Okay? All right. Are we all good? Remember to subscribe to this clinic. If today is the first day of attending my open clinic, it's every Tuesdays. Tuesdays by this time, 6.30 p.m. American time, Eastern, Eastern time, America, 11.30 p.m. Nigerian time. But on Saturdays, it's a little bit early. 12 p.m. Eastern time, U.S., 5 p.m. Nigerian time. So Tuesdays, we go a little bit late because of the program and the events. The weekends, we come a little, a little bit early. Okay. You wanted to know why fertility treatment leads to weight gain. It's very simple. Now, I don't want you to, you know, because in life, we always look for things to blame. Yes. Couple of hormonal treatments might lead to the ability of your body to draw in more water. It's temporal. Anytime you're using any artificial stuff into your body, it can alter the way your body is meant to work. So it's that gain you might have is temporal side effect or adverse effect of fertility treatment. For some, just like there are a couple of contraceptives you might be using and you notice you're adding a lot of body weight. Now, guess what? The question is not whether you're adding or losing. The question is what are you going to do about it? Are you just going to relax and allow yourself be increasing your body weight? The question is what are you doing? So if you notice you're adding excessive body weight based on the treatment you're having, then you need to modify your lifestyle. Body weight is a, a question of your impute and your output. So how much food are you eating? How much physical exercise are you engaging in? How much sleep are you getting? What about your stress level? So no matter what your body weight is, if you can fix your habits in regards to eating, your activity, your sleep, and your stress level, you will be able to be in the middle. So don't just blame me. Oh, doc, it's because I'm doing this, I'm having that. No, that's not good. Now, some women can have fundamental hormonal problems, which might be stopping them from having their normal body weight. There are some women that will be eating properly, exercising, and they're still not you know, dropping their body weight. We recognize those women. In such cases, we might try medical or drug treatment of the weight issue. But naturally for you, do what you need to do so you'll be in a good place. Let me give you an example. If you are 
being treated for polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is a known cause of infertility in women, a situation where your ovaries are not doing the right thing and you're not ovulating and you're producing more female hormones, you're producing more male hormones compared to female hormones and you're not ovulating. Now, in cost of treating you with all those fertility drugs and sometimes some diabetic drugs, you still have to work on your body weight. So any woman outside their body weight range, a 5% drop in your body weight will improve your fertility by 10%. Okay? All right. Okay, my time is up. Thank you for coming. The next clinic will be on Saturday. And Saturday will be, remember, 12 p.m. Eastern time. It, 12 p.m. Eastern time. 5 p.m. Nigerian time, and we'll get another topic and we'll keep talking about it. Now, remember, we are in all social media handles. We are in Facebook. We are right here in YouTube. We are in Instagram. We're in TikTok. We also have our website. So drop by and check any of these sites. But please make sure you set your notification so that anytime I come live, you will have opportunity to talk to me live. Until I see you guys on Saturday, God bless you and enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye-bye for now. God bless. Thank <laughs> you.